you know, I look back and I'm like, that was probably the biggest growing point in my life, here to here. I probably fought more injuries through fishing than anyone else. Some self-inflicted. I mean, I fell 22 foot and bounced off the ground. Four days later, I'm fishing an AOI championship, and then where else in the world but Big Bay to Knock. Any of y'all ever looked at the map and looked at Sturgeon Bay? That's God's ocean. I couldn't get hurt and fish on Lake Hamilton where the wind don't blow. I've got a broke outside bone, broke ribs. I can't move my shoulder forward. I've got fluid leaking out the back of my body, and the doctors don't know why. So I ice down every day, and I fish, and I fish, and I fish. I figure it's just another chance to show opportunity. Is that a warped way of looking at things? Yeah. But guess what? I sure went on through that AOI and made the classic. It ain't fair. I tell people, they say, what, what keeps people going? You just got to know life ain't going to deal you aces. It ain't. Young man at your age, you ain't going to get aces. You're going to have times when you sit up and say, life ain't fair. Life took somebody I love. Life took somebody. My mother might have passed away early. Don't let that dictate the man you could be. So what I'm trying to say, even in fishing, I don't want to let the mistakes dictate who I could be at the end of the day in the weigh-in line, but I surely don't want life's mistakes and things that are done to dictate who I want to be. All I worry about is how you handle it. When something bad happens, you have two choices most of the time. You can go up or down. It's your call. I tell everybody the only things that you can't change in me, attitude and effort. You can't call me. I might not win. But I can promise you, my attitude and effort ain't going to change. I've got up many mornings on day three and be 20, like, there's no way it looks like you can get a check. Done. There's no one looking. There is no one looking. So why shouldn't I just go out there, as my granddad would say, and just kind of just whip ass around, you know? You can't get a check. Because I ain't wired that way. On day three, when ain't nobody looking, you know what I taught my nephew? I said, you will make more money on day two and day three when ain't nobody looking than you ever will when the cameras are sitting front and center in your boat. You know why? Because nobody expects you to do nothing. So get it. There's low-lying fruit, son. Pick it. I'm not asking you to finish 20th. You just get me a $10,000 check and we'll go home. Early on in my career, I didn't have that kind of money. If things didn't go my way, I went back home, put on an apron. We just joked about it. I drove through the night to go back and get on a construction site. I was that guy. There wasn't nobody making no big deal out of college with me in high school. They didn't care. So on that last day of the tournament, wasn't nobody looking. I'm about to get mine. I'd fish like it was the Bassmasters Classic every day. But what I learned is you push yourself to be a different person. You push yourself to make up a few points. Buddy Gross asked me last year at the tournament, he said, I think I'm going to make the cut, but I'm so far out what I want to do. I said, let me tell you what you don't ever do. You don't ever give back a point to somebody you dumb took it. I said, so you're finished, you're sitting 50th. He said, I ain't got nowhere to fall. I said, yeah, but you're not counting where you could go. I said, if you beat four people tomorrow, you gain four points. My first AOI title was about one point. Everything counts in life. You make your money most of the time when no one's looking. In the garage, when no one's looking. You know the worst part about fishing? Do a tackle. Hours. There ain't nobody in there going, this is a highlight reel from Gerald Swindle spooling on his 68th reel today. That's the most boring part of it. But that's where you become the champion. That's where you set the discipline goes. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it right. I don't care if I go fish this tournament, I finish dead last. When I lay my head down at night, I'm going to know that I did it right, the best of my ability. So I have like, like, took this mentality this, through all this. It's like no matter what happens, I can't sit back and say poor, poor, pitiful me. I now look at it as in it's just another opportunity. Now my wife says, well, I'm an equal opportunist. But she said, you sure do get yourself in some pickles. Opportunity is just a chance to make better at it. I'm going to make a shirt that says I can make chicken crap. I, you, know, I, you ever seen your granddaddy, you know, chicken crap, chicken salad? I got the recipe for chicken salad. Because I'm telling you, I can get in a bind in a tournament and come back and get a check. But most of the time, ain't nobody looking at that. You ain't getting highlight reels. You just snuck in there and finished 47th. Got that $10,000 check and moved on. I see a lot of kids that fish, and my nephew was like this young. I don't know about you young men, but I get out in the water, and I start beating him, and I can see him just kind of lay over like he'd just kill him. And I'm like, he get his phone out. 
Y'all know how them young kids are. He get four or five fish down. He get his phone out. I said, I'm sitting up there fishing. I said, wh who are you texting? Uh, I said, if it ain't Jesus, put it up. If it ain't Jesus, put it up. Today we fishing. We fishing. My wife says, you're too tough on him. I said, the problem is we need more toughness. I'm not excusing him to text on the phone. He asked me to take him fishing. He's getting beat. He took his head out of the game. That's it. You think I'm going to let up on him? I beat him to death. I come home and ask him. I said, tell you, ain't Lulu, how bad G beat you? You know, and I've had my days this last year. He beat me. But I challenged myself sometimes. I would sit down and have a business call. I had to do a Zoom call. He's cranking. He had me down 11 to nothing. He said, what you think, Uncle G? I said, I got you right where I want you now. I can show you just what I can do when I'm behind. I said, see, you've never seen your uncle when the chips are down. I like it. I'm that weird guy. Why do you think I excel on tough fisheries? I love the Sabine. There's people that won't even want to drive over it. I love when life puts you in a corner because then it's simple to show who you are. It's easy when life is good. So he's like, I'll just let him get ahead of me and run him down. Now, this last year, I did come in and tell my wife. I said, whew, nephew got on uncle today. <laughs> you know, but what I know now is I look back and say I'm doing something right. You know, I think. When you see people, and I've talked to high school kids and college kids and just young kids, and I, I had a parent come up to me one time. She said, would you help my son? We've done everything we could to break through. We just can't get through. I said, all right, all right. She said, we've tried everything. Kid can't be old 20 years old. I said, let me talk to you, son. We walked over here by ourselves. I said, I want your mom and dad to hear this. I said, I, said, I, want, you, I want you to send me an email. I said, write my email down. I said, when you tried and you failed six, eight times, when you give it everything you've got, and you've exhausted everything else, I need you to get up and do it two more times, and when you repeat that eight times, and you're financially broke, and there's no reason to go forward, and anybody in their right mind says you should quit, I want you to get up and do it again, and I want you to call me and tell me you give it your all. Because see, right now, you just give it just enough to say you got beat. If you want it, there ain't no such thing as I give it my all. I'm 54. They ain't seen my all in there. I ain't done giving. So I'm telling this young man, you think you, you're going to set your standard? And you said at 20 years old, you're always here? You don't know where your all is. I mean, you look at some of the great business stories I know. I mean, a great friend of mine is Gary Klaus, one of the owners of Phoenix Boat. Left Strata, started his own boat company. You think that sometimes he'd sit back and said, I'd give it my all, I'm going to quit? Uh-uh. He rallied back. Him and Teresa built one of the strongest boat companies in the world. See, he didn't let his all be dictated by what he just exhausted at. The kid just looked at me. I said, see, you've already labeled me and told me that you think the top of the mountain's right here. You don't know how much you got until you dig down deep. The problem with his life, when we get pushed, we quit. I mean, I'm not saying that's a softer generation. I ain't saying I'm just saying there's a lot of people with blue hair, and I don't care. I don't understand it. I don't know why it is when somebody thinks they, they do their job, they should get a pat on the back. Y'all know somebody like that? They want, I'm working my nephew. He said, I did pretty good, didn't I, G? I said, well, I'm paying you to do it. What do you want me to do? Clap for you? Think about that. Why would I reward you for doing what I ask you to do? I need to reward you when you've done way more than I thought you could do. If I tell you you did good right here, see, you liable to let off of it. I need to see what you got in the tank. That's where, when I look at the young anglers that come on the, the Elite Series, I look at him differently. Like, I want to see what he's got when the chips are down. I never make a judgment on a guy when it's good. I want to see where he's at when it don't look so good. You, you, you guys play a lot of sports. You know, I didn't ever worry. I played baseball, basketball, football down here in Blount County. Matter of fact, it's a moment of claim to fame. I'm in the Hall of Fame at Blount County. I don't know why I played on a sorry baseball team. Well, we actually went to the state championship where we got beat by a team that had a lot of really big players and our uniforms didn't match, and I thought it sucked, and it got through really fast. But they beat us, but I made the Hall of Fame down here. You know, and I'm, I'm like looking at that, I'm thinking, well, what are we giving our kids? What, what are we telling them? You know, so when I had to do the Hall of Fame speech, I remember walking up there, and I'm looking at all these people, and I'm like, you know, I played all these sports, and it never was easy. It never was like this. So when I come out here and fishing, I'm like, we don't even know what our max is. So when I talk to a high school kid, he tells me how great, his daddy's been like, he's been catching them and catching them and catching them. Fine. 
I want to see him when he don't catch them for a year. Then I'm going to see who you are. The mental challenge of overcoming that is the strongest thing you'll ever mess with because you can get down. We go, it's this human. That's where you scare somebody. I tell kids, if you're fishing to get 200 likes on Instagram, you don't worry me. 